A lot of things have changed with the new 1.5 patch for Victoria 3 and one of these things is how you should be playing the Great Ching. The Great Ching starts off as not so great but today I'm gonna show you how you can make Ching great again and for just 6,900 likes we're gonna continue this campaign all the way to 1936 where I'm gonna be explaining in detail how you can get billions, not millions, but billions of GDP within just the first few years. Also, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. I'm really trying to get to 190,000 by the end of the year, which is basically around the corner. So I got to try at least, right? It might seem like uh, Ching is just absolutely amazing from the get go. And you're not wrong, actually, about that. 121 million GDP and 365 million population really means that if you wanted to, you don't even need to expand at all because you have everything you need. You got the pops, you got the GDP to just continue to grow. You got most of the resources with the ones that you don't have or lack some of you can just quickly grab from the Indonesian part from the Indo Chinese parts as well and from the uh, stands as well as the Arabian uh, Peninsula which are right next to you and that's actually what we're gonna do in this playthrough we're gonna be rushing for the uh, stand areas and for the Arabian bits for the later down the line op oil as well as this area for the uh, rubber and so on before we do that we do have a long way to go because we start in a pretty bad situation we have one of the lowest mappies or as you probably know it better as your market access price impact just hovering over Beijing we see quickly that we have 58% mappy in here which is bad that is actually horrible 58% mappy essentially means that things are insanely more expensive than they should be in our provinces and it's basically destroying our economy so we do have to fix our mappy we also have to fix a lot of other things we're going to be discussing those in detail now first and foremost though let's go over to our technology we're going to start researching stock exchange which offers an extra 10% mappy and we're gonna queue up right afterwards romanticism so we unlock agrarianism law in the economic system why we need that is because we start with traditionalism that offers a minus 15% mappy so by getting rid of traditionalism we gain 15% mappy by getting the stock exchange we gain it under 10% so instead of having 60% mappy we have 85% mappy now there's also province that increase our mappy so for example the areas around the uh, Yangtze River highlighted right now have an extra 5% mappy and 20 infrastructure from the Yangtze River modifier so these particular areas are going to be of really high value to us when building especially in the early part of the campaign obviously you can get the mappy through some other ways later down the line as we progress in the campaign we can get macroeconomics that offers another 5% mappy as well as the uh, zeppelin offer another 5% mappy but until we reach that point uh, we got a long way to go so let's uh, queue up uh, cotton gin lathe and uh, right afterwards atmospheric engine these are going to be our initial technologies take note the way that a technology works is we will have a cap of 73 innovation because our literacy is 15 percent which is extremely bad so we're going to build universities within the first couple of years but reality is that most of our innovativeness is going to go towards the technological spread because once we reach the cap of 73 innovation from having universities built everything else spills down into the technological spread essentially this is rng here so the technological spread will research technology randomly but there are some things that influence it so for example if let's say we are going to be researching cotton gin and then we stop researching cotton gin and we start researching i don't know bessemer process or something of the sort what happens is the technological spread has a higher chance of choosing to continue cotton gin which we stopped researching so we might abuse that uh, mechanic it's not necessarily saying abusing it because it's not abusing it's just is the way it is we're also going to reduce the autonomy of uh, Joseon over here we've demanded it and we can unpause for a little bit here they're going to obviously accept it there you go they are now if we refresh the map they should be a yellow on the map and they are an integral part of our society they are a puppet essentially we're going to annex Tibet but not just yet we have a few more things before we do uh, annex them let's go over to our budget up next we're going to set our medium taxes Qing surprisingly is one of the few nations that starts with uh, low taxes and we're also gonna go to medium government wages they start with high uh, government wages for some reason we also are losing essentially 1 million almost taxes because we don't have enough um, tax efficiency to increase that we need to build more government administration buildings however it's really expensive paper right now and it wouldn't be worth we wouldn't be able to 
to uh, make up for, for building all these government administration buildings. We wouldn't get out of them the extra taxes. The best way to handle that is to just get better legislation for now, better technology. For example, getting rid of traditionalism increases our taxation capacity by 25% because traditionalism has a debuff of minus 25%. Another good legislation for this is appointing bureaucrats. We already have it, which helps us out a little bit, right? So we need to make sure we keep this for the start, especially. One legislation we do not want to keep is poor laws. We're going to switch over to uh, no social mobility. Poor laws essentially is a uh, drain on our economy. We are losing right now 8.64 thousand from welfare, from poor laws. But most importantly, having one level of institution costs us 3.5 thousand bureaucracy because we have a really high population. This is based off of the population that you have, or better yet, incorporated population that you have. So getting rid of this is going to help us out a little bit. Then we can go for dedicated police force, which is going to lower the radicals from standard of living decrease and a state penalty from turmoil. So we can essentially replace uh, the uh, one level of uh, poor laws with one level of dedicated police force. And we also will do other legislations afterwards. But for now, that's going to be it. I'm also going to reform here. I'm going to get the uh, Confucian scholars and the armed forces, um, or better yet, just the Confucian scholars for now, I guess, into my government. Like confirm. Later, we're going to add the uh, armed forces. I really want to get them in as well. But um, obviously, the start can be RNG when you uh, start up a new game. My test runs, a lot of the times I was able to get the armed forces from the get-go without losing too much uh, legitimacy, but we'll work with it as we progress. Now, we do get 20% extra authority now because of the divine right, which uh, is due to the fact that we have at least three approval with the Confucian School. Once we have 10 approval with the Confucian School, we also get minus 100 radicals from standard of living decrease. So essentially, people don't uh, get more radicalized from uh, having uh, a worse situation in life. And that's going to be a recurrent theme in this initial part of the playthrough, at least. It's going to take a while to get jobs for 365 million population, you know. We also have a few other bonuses here, like uh, aristocrats investment pool contribution efficiency is pretty good too. And influence as well from family ties. This is RNG. I did three test runs prior to starting recording. This is the only one where I actually managed to get um, Confucian School powerful from the get-go. Usually, they only give 10% authority and 50% reduction for radicals from standard of living, but they started with 20% in this run. So that's kind of why uh, they're already powerful, right? I'm going to leave this as is. We'll come back to this and explain it a little bit more as we progress in the campaign. Let's go up next to the budget. Once more, we want to add some taxes. As with pretty much all of my videos, I'm going to add taxes on uh, services, which is right here. Also going to tax porcelain and uh, luxury furniture should be it. Not adding too many taxes because I'm mainly just trying to tax the upper and the middle strata, which obviously will always go for clothes, porcelain, transportation, services, luxury furniture, luxury clothing, right? Now, we don't want to tax the lower strata. That means we don't want to have opium taxes, grain taxes, clothes, liquor, furniture. So all of the stuff that are essential goods for the lower strata because they, they have enough going for them suffering wise and we don't want to radicalize them even more than they already are. So our initial construction queue is going to essentially be construction sectors. We need a lot of these. We're going to change over to iron frame buildings, the six initial construction sectors that we have. And we're going to build these up in uh, states that already have iron and coal. Why is that? Remember that in my Prussia video, I, I said that it's better to just have states dedicated for a specific good because we had high mapias Prussia and we had access to getting really high mapias Prussia early on. But as Qing, you're going to struggle with your mappy. So because your mappy is lower, you want to make it so that whatever is needed good wise for a particular production method, you want to have it available in that particular state. So what do I mean more, more exactly with this is that, for example, if we were to build, say, 10 construction sectors in outer Manchuria, you click control, hold control and click, by the way, to do that. And you hold the uh, shift and click to add five or remove five and so on. We will need in Manchuria for this construction sector tools, fabric, wood and iron. Now, if we were to import all of this from uh, our market, because we have only 60% mappy, it would be significantly more expensive to run these construction sectors in outer Manchuria. But if we were to build mines in outer Manchuria, the iron would directly be fed into the construction sector. So that's why wherever we build the construction sectors, we want to have all four of these available resources built in those states as well. So I'm going to queue up, say, a good 50 construction sectors. So another 10 over here. Pretty much Manchuria is going to be my main construction sector 
area. Another 10 over here. So we have 30 in Manchuria. I guess Beijing's going to be pretty decent too. Uh, why do I need iron and coal? Coal is not required. Well, it kind of is because eventually we're going to build the uh, tooling workshops. And when we have the tooling workshops, we're going to be building, we're going to be switching to these steel tools and all of those uh, tooling workshops, right? And steel mills require coal and iron. So you need the basic resource of coal and iron for the construction sector and the steel mill because you do need the steel for the tools which are required for the construction sector. You get what I'm going with this? Obviously also you want to build up your uh, logging camps and some sort of fabric producing building in those areas like cotton plantations. We can build cotton plantations in northern and southern Manchuria. So in the outer Manchuria we cannot build cotton plantations. So we have to find a building that also offers us fabric like the livestock ranches which we could also build in there of course. So I've queued up another seven construction sectors in Beijing. Uh, where else do we have a lot of uh, coal and iron? Yunnan is a pretty good region for that as well. Let's say another pen in Yunnan. That's 45. Urga is not bad because it has iron and coal. However, it is not an incorporated state, which we will incorporate right now. Actually, we're going to do that for all the states. Let's go ahead to our state action, incorporate. All of the western parts of our country are not incorporated. So you need to do that because if they're not incorporated, you don't get the tax from there. You don't have the benefits from being an incorporated state. So you also have 10% less mappy in unincorporated states and a lot of other debuffs so you want to make sure that everything is incorporated essentially we're also going to set up the uh, state maintenance or road maintenance in beijing because we have a little bit of infrastructure issues so now that the infrastructure issues is fixed we don't have any more market access issues as consequence holy shit i just saw shang has got 116 coal mines and 96 iron mines oh my god this is going to be one of my favorite states i'm going to queue up 10 but i'm actually going to lower some of the construction sectors from here because we don't have the fiber and because because honestly, uh, I don't want to overdo it. 50 seems like enough for now. Now, after we've queued this up, we need to make sure that they have the resources there, right? So we're going to queue up slowly one iron mine in each of these. Follow oh, This one has iron mine. So instead, I'm going to build up one logging camp. No, it has logging camp. Let's build up uh, a cotton plantation. There you go. Whatever the case, you want to start trickling in all of those resources that are required in all of these states, right? So queue up one by one. Then again, one after you've queued up in, the, the, in all of the other states that have the redness surprise beijing has no iron mines queued up we do have already a 16 percent penalty for iron which is a massive problem but we're going to be importing iron now take note in order to import stuff from other areas you need to have an interest or that nation needs to have an interest in you so uh we're going to import whatever we can right now so russia british portuguese and spanish whatever but we need to uh, change our declared interest so right now we start with north india indochina and japan going to change that up a little bit i'm gonna go with whoever else is also producing iron right now and i'm guessing well actually i'm not gonna guess i'm just gonna go to this and i'm gonna see production map mode uh yeah okay the russians i'm already importing from i don't need to worry about those the british i'm importing from the spaniards i'm importing the prussians i'm importing from uh they are producing here 119 that's not really that much they're producing 164 and they're producing 40 so i guess i could do sweden the baltic and new new England I guess yeah that should be fine for now it's temporary only because we need to rely on uh, iron and tools imports until we build our own iron and tools because otherwise we just crash our economy if we don't have any of that available but we require it for everything right i'm actually gonna use the third one here as should i go for persia i think i'm gonna go for indochina so usually what i do after i attack tibet is i either attack uh Kokand or burma two things can happen or even nepal sometimes three things can happen if i attack Kokand, russia is gonna join russia is honestly the toughest enemy at the start because we have such a huge amount of border with each other and it's it, it can be pretty challenging to win wars against the russians the brits will join if we attack nepal and then if we do that what happens is there's only one small strait over here through which they can actually attack us the rest of this is basically impassable terrain and uh, we can hold them out in this one strait if uh if that happens and then we just need to wait for the war score to trickle down for them and then we can enforce our demands burma in one of my test runs gave up and they became my um my uh 
uh, subject without a fight. One more thing we need to do before anything else is set up our army. So the way that I like to do it is I like to rename my army. So I'm going to rename them all to Imperial Army. First Imperial Army. Change it to State so I know where exactly this uh, army is based in. Change the flag pattern and the color of course so that it's easier for me to know what type of army is. I like to make infantry focused or, or main attack armies as yellow. I like to put green for the uh, special companies and so on. I'm going to have eight armies each consisting of 60 because we start with uh, 480 battalions meaning we can have 60 battalions in each army and most of them we can have actually 50 infantry and 10 uh, cavalry because some of these we actually have cavalry in them. Let me see if I can find any right now. There you go. See we have 10 hussars here so we can merge this up say with the uh, first imperial army which is going to be exactly afterwards uh, 60, 10 hussars and 50 irregulars for the time being. I've also started improving relations with the Russians in the hopes that I'm going to get good relations so they don't attack me as consequence. I'm also going to improve with whichever other nation is going to be rival to the Brits. That's likely going to be the French, but I don't have a uh, mutual interest with them right now. I might change to the North African interest after I've taken out Burma. Let's see how it goes. And then I can start improving with the French as well. Take note, the Russians are pretty much our main importer of wood in the early bit of the campaign until we get our wood production going. So if the Russians attack, I don't want to say it's a restart moment, but it's a very, very bad moment for us. So fingers crossed it doesn't happen. Out of my test runs, they did attack me once. So you really need to be very careful with uh, how you handle the Russians, really. Well, the opium crisis is here. We have to do something and or we cannot risk the ire of the Great Brits. I'm going to go with we have to do something. It's going to trigger the opium crisis journal entry here. And now we can ban the opium trade, which is going to absolutely crush our authority. Before we do this, I'm going to actually um, wait because having a little bit of higher authority also lowers my enactment time having, which means we can get rid of the social security a little bit faster. So I'll do it afterwards. Plus the Brits are likely going to attack me. So I'm going to do it when I'm at war with the Brits or after the war with the Brits. There you go. The Baltic uh, interest has been activated, which means we can get another 35 and another five iron from uh, the Americans. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. We're, we're going to switch these around as we need more and more. And as we can get more and more from whoever the schnapps we might be able to get it from really. We're essentially very desperate here to just get the basic resources from anywhere. <laughs> another reason why I like to have 60 battalions per army group is because 60 battalions means you need either two level one generals. I'm going to hire this guy over here and that is enough. Or you can also get one level two general and that's actually going to be a little bit cheaper from a bureaucratic point of view, but it does increase the interest group approval. So keep that in mind. This guy is a royalist, so I'm actually going to get rid of him. I don't want him here. Remember that with the 1.5 patch, you need to have at least the minimum amount of command limit. Otherwise, your organization is going to be destroyed. And that means your army is not going to stay in the fight for too long. 25 organization means that the company is going to be retreating sooner rather than later or losing the fight, really not just retreating. Also, guys, uh, we are going to do something really different here. So see how I color coded everybody here. Essentially, every single one of the yellow armies has 50 infantry with 10 hussars. The blue one only has infantry because I don't have that many hussars around. And the green one, I have hussars and in, uh, infantry, but I'm also going to get some artillery. Now, I'm getting the artillery because the artillery actually has more offense and defense as well as extra kill rate compared to the irregulars that we have. It's essentially got double the offense and 50% more defense. The problem is that we cannot actually recruit regular artillery because uh, we have no supply of artillery required for um, cannon artillery and we cannot expand the cannons in these provinces. We maxed out the barracks essentially, but we can however get conscript cannon artillery. So we're going to get some of those, let's say in the province of uh, Jiangxi, which I think is one of the highest pop wise province that we have. So 20 for this army and the secondary 8th army we're going to get, oh sorry, I already got an 8th. The 7th army we're going to get another 20 in Shangji. Why not? Shangji is pretty much massive population as well. This artillery we're likely going to need to import when the need arises for it. However, the need only arises because these are conscripts whenever we mobilize these conscripts and we're not going to need them for the war with Tibet. We're just going to keep them around whenever we start the war with the English or with the Russians if we get really unlucky. But realistically, if the Russians attack, I'm probably just going to give them Tomsk, which is 90% of the times the province that they want from you because I'll be ready for the second war against the Russians. The first war, not so much. Okay, so 
so we've passed actually our legislation fairly quick. Now I do have a little bit of an issue. I just realized that passing over dedicated police force is not bad, but it's going to take away all the bureaucracy and I cannot afford it just yet. I need the bureaucracy until I'm able to build more bureaucratic buildings. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to uh, fully incorporate all of the Western bits and I'm not going to be able to make up for the extra population increase because bureau bureaucracy is going to slowly decrease as my population increases, especially in the early bit of the campaign. So I'm going to wait out on uh, the dedicated police force. Instead, I'm going to pass professional army, which is going to give me a few really vital bonuses for when I'm fighting the British and when I'm fighting the Russians and everybody else. First off, I get 100 max barracks level so I can start building regular troops, more regular troops. Second off, I get the morale loss reduction and weekly experience gain for my armies and navies plus 25% as well as it rebalances the interest group attraction for certain stratas for the entire stratas actually it's servicemen non-servicemen officers and aristocrats so to pass that i need to get more support for this right now scholars officials are not really on board with it but we have the armed forces on board with it so i'm gonna need your scholars officials to support that the way that you do this is you get rid of the leader right now mr aizen joro is uh the leader and he's loved everybody loves this guy apparently 95 holy shit it's gonna be tough but i don't care i really don't care brother you might be loved but you're not loved by me are you i'm gonna get him out of the government i'm gonna click confirm and then what happens is we can exile this guy the guy that's gonna replace him is rng however so we need to make sure that the uh characters that we have for that particular interest group are the ones we need we need someone that is jingoist so let's see what do we have we have this guy who's a reformer we don't need a reformer you're gonna have to be let go sir retire commander traditionalist especially big no retired this guy as well all right so i fired everybody with the exception of this dude mr dong kui who is a jingoist but he's not really loved by anybody i'm gonna promote him a few times in the hopes that that's gonna improve his chance of getting selected fingers avec le crust y'all okay so we have a jingoist okay that is really weird so this guy is not actually he's not one of our generals he's just a random freaking jingoist okay well that that works for me i don't mind uh let's go back here now we can bring him back into the government 100 percent and the best part is that we have 72 endorsement for a professional army so this is going to pass extremely fast and this is going to be of massive help to us i'm going to keep my uh authority high so we get the extra enactment time and then after this we're gonna be at peace and we can just uh, go ahead and we can ban and the opium trade to get this enacted we need to have five years in which we are at peace essentially so that's why i'm trying to time this as well as i possibly can because let's face it the british are likely to attack me any moment now huzzah we've annexed tibeticus now let's incorporate all of tibeticus also there you go first take it went down to consideration not surprised whatsoever since there's nobody opposing it we got two irregulars from uh, the tibetans i'm going to just disband that we don't need this army there you go and let's uh, go ahead and make a trip tributary out of Nepal and Bhutan next. And all the way into adoption phase as well. Holy snaps, we are on fire. Also, what the hell, Britain? Why are you not freaking supporting the Nepalese? Come on, come on. We need you to be here. We need to schnapple dupe you in the Straits of Nepal. That sucks, Peepy, not gonna lie. That actually sucks, Peepy, right now. We're also massively in need of extra iron, but it's fine. We'll uh, we'll start uh, building a lot of iron in a few moments. Almost done with our construction sectors, not to fear. And what the hell happened? Don't tell me. Oh, bro. Nepal back down. Well, that do happen sometimes. It does happen. Same goes with uh, Bhutan. They usually back down. That's why I, apply, I attack Nepal first. All right, well, whatever the case, let's continue here. Bhutan, maybe that's our lucky chance. If not, uh, we're going to go for Burma and die Viet and so on. Whatever works best. And we just got professional armies, boyos. Now, to get the rest of this, unfortunately, a lot of it is also locked behind technologies, which we don't yet have. Uh, let's see. We do have passive resources search on romanticism by any chance we do not we're gonna start building up our universities right after we've gotten a few iron mines down so almost there with that too there we go this is the first batch of iron mines queue up a lot more than that though and let's also queue up some tooling workshops right afterwards right now the tooling workshops are not making any profit because the uh, cost of iron is just ridiculous so actually we should probably prioritize a little bit our beijing mines because the beijing area is where we have the only 
only tooling workshops right now. And of course, Bhutan gave up as well. Uh, speaking of, there's also a little tributary here, Lanfang, that we can reduce the autonomy without a fight because they will always accept to uh, become an incorporated vassal. There you go. Now we've established ourselves a lot more here. Little yellow Yanfang, just the way it should be. Yet, yeah, Lanfang, actually, historically speaking, was essentially a Chinese colony in Indonesia of, um, I don't want to call them pirates, but um, let's say uh, sail enthusiasts from a few hundred years back. Technically, they kind of ran away from Ching, but yeah, Ching, uh, Ching said, don't you go too far now. Bro, are you freaking serious right now? Again, man, Burma back down. I was so freaking close to getting the British to uh, get boggled down in Burma. But no, looks like um, we're going to have to do this the hard way. We're actually going to have to uh, ban the opium trade, which means the British will attack us. I'm not really ready for that though not yet anyway i'm not ready for it but i only have a couple more years before i can successfully press this so i gotta get ready man i gotta get ready let's try uh how much is our infamy now we got 42 we need to chill okay we cannot just go around doing that anymore gonna bring back my uh diplomats from uh, sweden gonna continue to improve with the french in the hopes that i'll be able to get them and uh on my side when we do the diplomatic play against the brits and just continue to build iron mines tooling workshops and uh, wo logging camps and the construction sector states. Hey, we also managed to get the stock exchange, which is amazing because now we have an extra 10% mappy. So slowly but surely we are fixing our economy. As for our technology, we are getting uh, spread over to paddle steamer, medical degrees and cotton gin. Cotton gin is the only good one there. Medical degrees probably the most useless one in my opinion. Looks like these guys made us their rival. So let's uh, return the favor, shall we? I am going to be attacking or better yet, I'm going to make the uh, British attack me soon so to get ready for that i started getting more artillery uh, conscripts and i'm gonna change my capital now the way you do that is you go to your political lens state action change capital now whenever you do change your capital it's gonna increase the taxation capacity by 25 percent and the universal pop political strength by 25 percent in that particular state but we will get authority bureaucracy and influence minus 10 percent after five years this will of course go away but for five years that's gonna be a little bit of an issue so it's good to change your capital to a state that has a lot of population because of that extra taxation capacity Chongqing is really good the reason I'm changing the capital is not because I don't like Beijing or nothing it's simply because when we uh, go to war with the British there's a high chance that they will land and when they do land it's gonna be an issue for us we don't want them to get our capital because then they get the war score down for us really fast and we've basically lost right so Ningxia not bad because it's pretty far away in even Gansu but the problem is that these states are dog shit so we don't want to change over to 8 million pops Chongqing is a good middle ground 19 million population it has some coal not amazing Jiangxi is the highest uh, per population so you'd get the most tax income out of changing it here but it's really close by to the to the um, coastline so it's basically pretty much the same like Beijing Henan again really good 21 million population it has some coal and some sulfur, which will be of use later down the line. Shangxi is actually an amazing state, but it's basically the same like Beijing, and, it, and it's right next to Beijing, so it's pointless. So I'm gonna change it to Chongqing for now. I might change it afterwards to Jiangxi or even Shangxi, but for the time being, I would say that Chongqing is the best option to defend our country against those vile British when they do decide to attack us, right? Now, boys, the biggest uh, problem you will be facing is Qing at the start is getting rid of the opium crisis the moment that you ban opium what's gonna happen is the british are gonna attack you and we just banned opium so what are we gonna do well we're gonna actually attack the portuguese over here we're gonna attempt to take back our treaty port and guess what the british are gonna join up and they're gonna help them out as expected and on time the british are helping out now just in the unlikely event that we're actually gonna win this we're gonna force recognition for great ching but that's not gonna happen and that's not really the point of this war the point of this war is to lose and then uh, portugal gets a land fang our little schnapple dupe in indonesia but in return we get a five years truce with the british which in turn means five years is what we need to get the opium crisis well to better yet win the opium crisis and after we've won the opium crisis we'll build up our army and we're gonna get rid of the portuguese we're gonna get rid of everybody else trying to influence stuff around our area we're gonna 
push into uh, the treaty port of Macau, but likely we're not going to take it. We're just going to grind down our units and just lose a lot of units in the process, unfortunately. It do be like that. The British have no war goals, so we kind of just want to do this war sooner rather than later. We can even capitulate, honestly, since there's virtually no chance of us winning this. I mean, look at this. They're just pushing in like a knife through butter, so let's just capitulate. Screw this. There you go. Now we got rid of that war, and the best part is that we have a five years truce with the British, enough time for us to uh, pass the opium crisis, get rid of the opium crisis, win the freaking opium crisis by not having been at war for five years with anyone. This time's out in seven years, so it's vital that you do it within that particular time frame. Give yourself the time available for it. Now, that being said, we can also take this time to uh, fix up our economy. These five years, we can double our GDP as well as maybe pass some decent legislation like homesteading here we seem to have a little bit of support for this not too much support for it unfortunately but better than nothing uh yeah of course the biggest opposition is the scholar officials or landowners whatever you want to call them which are basically really adamant that we get that done they also want me to pass the local police force but i don't want that i want the dedicated police force not just yet though as you can see bureaucracy is uh, steadily and quickly going down so once we've uh, built up a few more iron mines, at least until we have 1.7, 1.8 thousand uh, production of iron, then we can start building some paper mills and a few other things around, not just the, essentially the construction goods. The problem with Shangxi also is that it doesn't have any local wood production. So uh, I queued up seven of those. We need to bring up a little bit of wood in Shangxi since this is one of our main construction sector hubs alongside the uh, Manchurian bits and Yunnan over here. I'm also going to start getting some coal mines in Changxi so we can start switching over to uh, gas street lights queued up some food industries as well and it's high time that we get some universities now the thing with universities is that unlike Prussia or any of the other countries that have really high education we don't have that so in order to get the educated or qualified people for universities we cannot just have all of them in one state we have to build one university essentially in pretty much all of our states until we start bringing our qualification up we got more people qualified then afterwards we can start getting the throughput bonus by building a lot of universities in just one state actually it's not so bad I switched over to uh, gas street lights in most of my provinces not all and the shortage that we have right now is really acceptable we're only missing out on roughly 60 coal which we'll be getting once we've uh, built up the coal mine that is already in the production queue or the construction queue better yet and despite the fact that I could technically try and and go for homesteading because of all the opposition from the uh, scholar officials i'm actually gonna go for landed voting first so we actually start getting political parties in and we move a little bit away from uh, a complete autocracy essentially there is some support for this from the armed forces the uh, literati and industrialists and most importantly there is no opposition from our primary uh, political parties or sorry interest groups and as such it's actually okay to gun for landed voting first before anything else i'm also gonna queue up more construction sectors now we essentially want to eventually max out the construction sectors in the uh, states in which we've already built construction sectors and then as we're building those extra construction sectors we build up more iron mines more tooling workshops and so on like i said earlier in the campaign the best way to snowball as the uh, ching is to have a little bit of a sacrifice at the start of the campaign and then once you have a massive production base you just are essentially unstoppable oh yeah baby after a landed voting passes and it should should pass fairly quickly because we also have uh, 5 million individuals that would like to see this pass quick. After that, we're go of course going to go for agrarianism. Now, this also brings the issue of if we have agrarianism and we have homesteading as well, that's going to be an issue for us because that means that the uh, rural folk are going to get way too much power. So we're going to need to curb stomp that. I might actually go uh, instead of homesteading, I might try and go for tenant farmers first and uh, pass homesteading later down the line after we switch from agrarianism to interventionalism if possible or even less affair that would be the perfect one right and we also just established a university because we built two well we built the level two university in our capital of Chongqing now this means we can get university throughput and some sort of political strength for the academics for five years or we can get for empiricism 2.5k progress or for medical degrees I'm gonna go for empiricism that's actually the better legislation there because uh, empiricism also unlocks total separation state 
state atheism, public schools, and a few other things here that we uh, might use. Plus, it lets us go down the psychiatry uh, route, which allows us to get less bureaucracy per population cost modifier, which is a huge deal because we have a lot of population and dialects, which basically means we're going to get more innovativeness out of our universities as consequence when we have this particular production method unlocked and obviously active. And speaking of, we have right now 74 innovation and it is capped essentially and whatever is uh, not spent is essentially diverted towards the technological spread. Of course, it's not as much as you would imagine it to be, but it's better than nothing, right? Now, that being said, we're close to getting lates and then going for atmospheric engines, but I'd like this to be a little bit faster. We really need to get our literacy up the sooner the better because atmospheric engine pump essentially doubles the amount of uh, resources extracted and it changes from a merchant's guild which is shopkeepers and remember shopkeepers only give 5% dividends to the investment pool to the privately owned which is capitalists which offer 20% dividends to the uh, investment pool right so we obviously want to get those juicy capitalists in charge here but we need atmospheric engine pump to get said capitalists in case you're wondering what I'm doing for infrastructure I just keep using the road maintenance where it's required plus I'm building up some uh, ports because ports have five infrastructure per level as long as you have the cargo port production method the anchorage has no infrastructure so keep that in mind and it doubles as you progress with the production methods industrial ports have 10 per level modern ports have 15 I think per level now considering that I have 33 million pounds in my investment pool it's time to use some of that and I'm gonna use it to build some farms all around the country this is for two reasons obviously we provide jobs to our people and as such they become less disloyal and less radicalized and second off it actually slightly boosts up our income and it increases our standard of living because people you know they have food and so on a lot cheaper as consequence plus it gives our economy a little bit of time to recover since uh, right now we've pretty much gone through most of our uh, savings and we have 2.5 million credit that period in which we build up the the agriculture and ranches and so on is going to be a period in which we're going to build up that uh, that reserve again and I think it includes plantations doesn't it yep it does so we can build a lot of dye plantation dye is going to come in massive handy everyone's going to need to have dye eventually for their production methods and uh pea plantations as well we're going to build essentially everything here all the plantations imaginable i like to call this part of the run the uh reawakening because we're reawakening those peasants to get back to work come on time to work everybody and we just got landed voting hells to the yes Ooh, that means we changed our flag oh that is such a cool freaking flag boys and there you have it boys we can uh, get agrarianism now that's my obvious main focus i did have to bring the uh, rural folk into the government to be able to get agrarianism going but it's fine we'll bring the armed forces back in later down the line for now this is our main focus of course also gonna queue up another shipyard because i am a little bit lacking with my shipyards right now i'm gonna out click that one so it goes to the front of the queue and finishes a little bit faster the french want to have a trade agreement with us oh my lord yes -a please that is the beginning of a great friendship between us oh my god oh do we want to get the defensive alliance though i don't want to owe them obligations mm, yeah maybe i can give that a little bit of thought first they are protective towards me so that's really really good i might use them to get uh, recognition in that case uh, since they are protective towards me obviously i'm going to do that after the opium crisis because we want to get rid of this particular modifier if we don't do this then these modifiers here are going to be ours for the next nine years we don't want that do we now since we lost the province of lanfang i had to set up my uh, declared interest in here again because we will slowly creep our way into the Indonesian bits. I've also set up my interest in uh, Arabia since I'm going to be attacking Kathiri, the nation with no armies and the nation that nobody cares about. That's my entryway into uh, this land since I might try and get recognition from the Ottomans once I, got, once I have line infantry. They are still a great power so they could technically give me my recognition and they are also extremely easy to defeat compared to most of the other great powers. Yay! The end of addiction. The sovereignty of Great Ching is absolute. Man Chu and Han, our primary cultures, stop being obsessed with opium. And for 20 years almost, we get 20% authority, influence, and 20 legitimacy. Or, harmony will re re return. We don't get the authority, influence, and legitimacy, but we get radicals from standard of living decrease, loyalists increase, and minus 2% mortality. Now, the authority is not bad at all, but uh, I like to see my people a, little more, a bit more happy. So, let's go for the uh, standard of living bonuses over there. I think those are the best ones, in my opinion. Check it out. We 
already went down to 24 million from the 60 something that we had before and 10 million loyalists so uh yeah things are definitely shaping up in our nation aren't they i love looking over ching and seeing how many specific modifiers we have here like for example agriculture and plantation throughput in a lot of these provinces means that if we built in these particular states agriculture and plantation buildings we get massive bonuses especially once we fix our mappy which is fast approaching by the way this is going to skyrocket our freaking economies and also i want to give a big shout out to the forbidden city which is a very unique monument that offers 50 authority flat plus 20 legitimacy from including the head of state and the government so that's a really good monument there because legitimacy is almost always the main thing that people struggle with in my opinion i know i do struggle with it a lot in most games oh my god i just realized i forgot to switch over to uh fishing trawlers that is a big deal actually i forgot to do this for the first seven years of the campaign i missed out on so much because of it i just did it now and as consequence i've uh also queued up at least uh, three more shipyards here that we obviously need for that uh fishing trawler production method right we've also reached that point where we're going to be reducing the autonomy of all of our tributaries and we're going to start getting some new tributaries because it is time to get some new ones looks like uh, burma is going to accept as well and that means we have now 14 and for me not too bad overall i'd say it is essentially enough for us to start conquering lands in arabia now and pretty much all of my games kathiri has been the entrance points to arabia so then after we have the foothold there we uh set one of our armies as uh, the home base in kathiri and then from there attack nejd lahej mara all of this slowly creeping our way to the ottoman borders and then forcing them to recognize us as a great power right oh my god finally we got 10 percent for agrarianism we had 24 we failed this twice man come on dude what is up with this rng <laughs> booyah shaka boy now another thing i have to say is that if you really want to min max this you probably should go for the kenyan bits especially try and colonize this but it's a little bit more difficult to get colonization in the first place as ching so it's doable as most other nations uh, alternatively you can try and rush for oman get this area and use that as your entrance into uh, the rich kenyan bits we will be going for the ethiopian lands after we get arabia and still going in the stands the russians did cuck us here a little bit unfortunately but it do be like that sometimes i would have attacked this nation if they didn't take it beforehand right which would have been an easy way into bukhara kiva afghanistan and so on oh, oh. All right, baby, let's go. This also means that we need to have coal and tools in those states where we have iron mines. So that's why we built most of those iron mines and those uh, tooling workshops in the same states where we had the construction sectors because of this and because of the steel mills that we're going to build in a while. So uh, let's get to building, boys, because now we're going to have some massive ass freaking shortages, aren't we? I've also taken advantage of the fact that the Russians have a little rebellion in uh, Kokand and I've uh, started annexing Joseon. This is a little bit of infamy, so now we're back up to 35, meaning we have to chill a little while after. But I'm doing this because normally Russia would support them, and I would have to fight the Russians to annex my own vassal. But because the Russians already have that rebellion going for them, they're not going to be involved in my particular engagement here, and I can just do whatever the schnapps I want with my vassal, of course. This should be a fairly easy fight since they have the same dog shit technology as I do, and I've got those extra artillery pieces, remember, that uh, we hired as conscripts. Wait, I just realized we have an agitator to enact tenant farmers poor my gore yes a please oh that is so freaking good right there so we could maybe go for tenant farming afterwards instead of homesteading this is, a, this is basically the same situation let's face it but i just don't want to make the uh the peasants too strong right now you know there's a tendency in china when you make the peasants too strong to to have a little bit of a red flag uh, lifted let's say me yow as they say in uh, the province of meow south China. We just got rid of that horrible minus 15% uh, mappy and a lot of other stuff. I just saw my income go up by a hundred thousand. Holy shit. So now let's check it out. Say for example, let's click on here. Tools. Tools, tools, tools. Our current mappy here is 85 base value without any reductions and plus 10% from the stock exchange. Of course, this is 81 right now because uh, we uh, we have a little bit of market access issues in uh, Beijing. 5% less market access. But that's going to be fixed once we have railways in a few moments. We're pushing hard to get railways sooner rather than later. Unfortunately, one issue you will have once you integrate Joseon is that you have an extra 40 million population. So your bureaucracy is going to be 
actually tanking. We queued up the bureaucratic buildings. We've also queued up some more paper mills to help out with lowering the price of paper. But uh, yeah, it's uh, at the bottom after we do the tea plantations and everything else. Don't worry, 1,000 reduction is only 8.9 tax waste and we're still on medium taxation. So we're still pretty A-OK -okay in my opinion. Okay, now the GDP difference is quite literally freaking ridiculous. The second nation after us GDP wise is East India with 64 million GDP. That is just not even any sort of a competition here, man. Holy crap, a second agitator for tenant farmers. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Everybody wants this except our main political party, the uh, scholar officials here. How about Ludi? It's called an interest group, not a political party, bro. Shut up, okay? Go back and eat your freaking oatmeal, scumbag. If I call it a political party, you better say it's a political party, you hear me? Or I got my friend here, Russia, that's got some interesting spots for you to chill in uh, cold ghoul, 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 goulash, cold goulash. Oh, it is on, boys. We just got line infantry, so we can start slowly upgrading our units to line infantry. Oh, this is gonna be a Jose, boys. Massively a Jose now, because we're gonna be able to get that recognition from whoever we're gonna be attacking with our massive armies. And we're also able to get tenant farming. So apparently, our scholar officials have minus eight unhappiness. They need to have minus 10 to start a revolution. So we're on the edge, but we haven't passed the edge so we're be able we'll be able to get tenant farming as consequence i am in the process of heavily industrializing so my economy is taking a little bit of an l but uh, we're gonna get back up afterwards we also just got tenant farming so that's pretty juicy let's see what else we can pass legislation wise now oh this is literally an orgasm boys we got railway transportation my market access has been absolutely lacking around everywhere so getting these uh, railways is gonna be an actual freaking godsend right now plus because of our economic policy policy we can uh economic system we can also pay for these railways with our investment pool we're also doing a cheeky invasion in gaza so we have access to the rich resource areas of south africa we're gonna eventually conquer all of south africa and we're gonna just expand all around africa we have footholds all over here already marina kingdom is also a very easy target especially in the early part of the campaign nobody gives a schnapps about this area and it's just basically ripe for the taking and it has rubber and a few things that we're gonna need down the line i've also split my third and ninth army i've split them in half essentially i made two separate groups so i have uh, less of a debuff from doing naval invasions that being said i do need more ships so i'm gonna queue up a few more ships around say a good 30 frigates should do for the time being since we have 30 naval landing forces here right so wait i mean since we're right next to marina and we talked about it we might as well attack them up next right <laughs> gotta declare an interest first apparently we don't have an interest there oh right because that's part of that area yeah, all right, let's get two of these then. I've also reformed my government and we have the industrialists in, which means there's a chance that I might actually get a laissez-faire. I'm gonna try for this. If we if it passes, then we can use our investment pool to build manufacturing industries and we have 70 million in the investment pool. So we would basically skyrocket. Plus we get the extra one company and loan interest rate minus 25%, boys. This is the one we really need and hopefully we pass it as soon as possible. Otherwise, we can just go for interventionalism. That's better than uh, agrarianism as well. So two chances really here. In fact, before the Marina Kingdom attack, we're going to do South America. We need to get Argentina, Chile, all these lands whilst they're still small. And as consequence, it costs less infamy to puppet these areas, right? Plus, Argentinian area has a lot of coal, sulfur, all that schnapps that we're going to need later down in the campaign. And the Bolivian bits are going to have a lot of oil that we're going to need as well. So good actually having decent units and not just uh, Pepega paper units that we start with right line infantry basically means we have the same as most nations in the world very few actually have skirmishers i think right now it's just the u.s prussia austria france and great britain that have skirmishers nobody else as far as i remember hey we did atmospheric engine that's awesome so we can either get the throughput or we can get water to boiler 3.5k tech obviously the tech the biggest issue we have of course as um as uh, ching is the technology so we're gonna try and work as much as we can with it improve it as much as we can imagine being one of these uh, little uh, peasants in Argentina and all of a sudden you see masses of Qing soldiers that coming down on you it wouldn't be a pretty pretty a sight with it now okay let's see uh great Qing enables homesteading in land reform wait what okay this is a big deal we get our legislation for free for free boys what would these guys say these guys would be pretty fucking pissed wouldn't they if we do that yeah but I don't really care about them too much how about we do that screw it let's go ahead homesteading for 
free. They're minus six unhappy. It's not so bad. So it you needs to be minus 10 to get uh, revolt. They're not going to revolt. They'll be okay with it in a few years. They're going to be like, man, it's fine. We got homesteading. Not much of a big deal, is it, boys? No, it's not. Exactly. You know, I'm actually curious if there's any achievements as um, as a uh, Ming. Let's see. We got shut the door behind you. No, I don't think that's a specific one. The Western Protectorate. A hard achievement as Great Qing. Have a treaty port in France, Germany, the British Isles, Iberia, and Italy. Hell yeah. That's what we're going to go for. That right there is exactly what we're going to go for in the second part of this campaign because this video has actually been taking a little bit of time. We reached 1852, 1853. We're super strong and we're going to get even stronger if we get that like goal so we can continue this amazing campaign and so I can discuss in detail every single thing that I say so you guys get a better understanding of how you can follow along with uh, me and your own Ching games. Hey, if you enjoyed the content, check out this amazing Germany video until the next time. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.